to God. It's just so good to be in the presence of God again. And I, I just tell you what, I, I'll say it again. And uh, it's just, uh, just don't ever regret it. Amen. So wonderful to be in his presence today. Amen. Well, we're going to get into the words. Y'all ready to get into the word for a few minutes this morning? Open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Anybody know what verse we're going to? Verse 6, we're going to revisit uh, somewhere that, that we've been studying for a number of weeks now, and uh, I'm just not through yet, so we're just going to keep rolling with it, all right? Yeah. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 ver uh, says this, says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him or to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Well, uh, what we've been looking at is this, God as our rewarder, that God is the one who is in charge of our payday and that our expectation needs to be set and fixed upon him. You know, it's easy to get your expectations upon a lot of things, a lot of places, and you know, you get your expectation upon people or on government or even upon some family, and you're going to realize that everybody is going to let you down at some point or another because they're not God. However, there is one that will not let you down. In fact, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And Malachi, he says, I'm the Lord, I change not. That means he's faithful, he always has been, and he always will be. He's the one you can fully trust in, fully rely on, and fully depend on. Praise God. So he says uh, that, that God is a rewarder of, of who? Well, of those who diligently seek him, those who set their heart, set their affection, set their attention, set their might, set everything they have to persevere and persistently pursue God. Amen. Anybody like that here in this place today? Amen. Hallelujah. So we've looked at some different things that we can do to align ourselves with God's best so that we can see his reward hit our, hit our life. And if God's a rewarder, amen, then I believe he wants to reward those. He wants to reward those that are seeking him. That means he wants to reveal himself. He wants to pour out his blessing. He wants, he wants that for us. Amen. And so uh, we've taken the past few weeks and just kind of see some different things that God rewards. And of course, you know, we've looked at some different things. He rewards faithfulness and, you know, he rewards. Some, some different things, you know, uh, diligence and seeking him. And, and so this morning we're going to look at another avenue uh, as far as seeing what God, seeing what God rewards. So in Deuteronomy chapter 28, I want you to turn there. I know that's a, a big jump from where you're at. Um, and if you didn't bring your Bible, we'll have the scripture on the screen for you. But Deuteronomy chapter 28 in verse 1. And um, this, this chapter is a, is a great chapter, but has all kinds of interesting things in it as far as, you know, curses and blessings and that sort of thing. And, and, um, but I just want to point out one real simple thing in here, and, and it actually uh, reoccurs a number of times throughout the first few verses here. But in chapter 28, verse 1 of Deuteronomy, it says, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Now, I want you to see this. What, what you just see permeating through this is what? He says, if you diligently, he says, obey the voice of the Lord your God. If you carefully uh, observe his commandments and, and that you do them, right? Right? He says these blessings are come, come upon you and overtake you if you obey, if you obey God. What is he saying? I mean, real simply, he's saying, I want you to observe what I'm saying. I want you to hear what I'm saying, and I want you to do it. I want you to do it. Amen. I believe in Joshua 1 and verse 8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Then I'll make your way prosperous, and then you'll have good success. All right, so what do we see in the reward connected to right here? Well, he's saying, listen, if you'll listen, if, if you'll meditate, if you'll think on, and you'll obey what I'm, I'm telling you to do, obey what I'm asking you to do, he says that my blessing will be upon be upon you. My reward will hit your life, right? Now in Isaiah, I believe it's Isaiah 1 and verse 19, and, and you've heard this many times if you've been around here very long. Isaiah 1 and verse 19, what does it say? If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So here we see just three passages of scripture just line up just right, just like that, that, that God wants us to obey him. 
God wants us to obey him. So, I mean, wh- what does this make God? And I know a lot of people don't necessarily like this aspect of, of God. They kind of see it as, well, God is just like Mr. Bossy Pants, you know. Like, God is just the one, like, just trying to tell everybody what to do 24-7. How annoying is that? And they almost kind of perceive God as he's just like, he wants to just, you know, put us here on the planet, boss us around the whole time we're here, and then we're going to spend eternity with the God that's going to tell us what to do 24-7 for all of eternity. How horrible is that, right? And that's kind of of the perception that people have of God almost like you know uh, you know I just I just don't like that idea I just got to obey God for real like just that's, I just got to do what he tells me to do and, and in reality there's there's a, an element of distrust that a lot of people have with God but not only with God but with uh, like authority figures so to speak like I don't really trust uh, leaders I don't really trust the pastor I don't really trust you know uh, the governor or the president I really don't trust my parents or I really don't trust my teacher I really don't. and so because there's a certain level of distrust I mean almost people kind of like to not trust like well there's something going on fishy y'all know what I mean like something not right going on in leadership or something not right going on and because that kind of permeates our culture so to speak and it like fills movies and tv shows it's just like it people tend to carry that over into their perception of God which is you know I don't trust this 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 and I definitely don't trust God I mean, uh, you know, maybe I'll obey him, maybe I'll go to church every now and then, you know, but I just can't trust him. Almost like he's like, he's like a a mega Wizard of Oz, you know. Yeah, anybody ever watch The Wizard of Oz? I know it sounds like a horrible movie for a preacher to mention while he's preaching about a wizard, but... But anybody ever watched The Wizard of Oz? I mean, like we're off to see the wizard, the wonderful Wizard of Oz, and all these people think they're going to get all their things taken care of. You know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be a real boy. Um, wait, no, that's Pinocchio. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding, y'all. <laughs> Some of y'all don't know either way, so you're like, whatever. I don't. Yeah, he's going to be a real boy. Uh, but they're all, they're all off to see the wizard because he's going to fix everything that's wrong with us, right? He's going to fix it. And then, and then come to find out it's just this guy behind a curtain, right? Guy behind a curtain with a crazy big voice. And, you know, it's, just not like, it's just not real. And so people, they, they think like that's, that's God. Like, like God, like, he, you know, he, he used some guys to write a book and like he sent Jesus, but I've never actually seen him. So who knows, you know, and I, like I don't really trust that. And so, you know, at the end of this thing, we're going to find out there really wasn't a God. There's just a bunch of religions. It's like all fake stuff. And, and that's kind of what permeates our culture, like this certain level of I don't trust God. I don't trust the Bible. I certainly don't like the preacher who just passed the buckets right there's a certain level of of distrust and so so when when God is saying these things obey and obey my commandments my blessing will be upon you if you be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land why why does God look for our obedience why I mean, what, why does he say, I want you to, to, to obey me with a willing attitude? Why does he say, I want you to serve me with all of your heart? Why does he say those things to you? What is he really after? Okay. What is he really after? Because could it be that he's after more than just you being a robot? What is he really after from you? What does it take for you to obey I'll just tell you a story, you know, about my kids. About my kids because, you know, uh, every, you know, parent's favorite scripture is Ephesians 6, 1. <laughs> Children, obey your parents in the Lord for this is right. Don't you ever forget it, little Johnny. Right? But, but at some point they're going to grow up. Right? Are they going to listen to you after they grow up? Hmm, it's good. It's good thought, isn't it? Well, just yesterday, uh, no, yes, no, Friday night, the ladies were having shine after dark, and and so um, I always try to plan something off the wall, a little bit different, something. So I was planning on taking my kids camping. We were going to go camping on Friday night, and but it but it rained Friday. So I picked the kids up and I say, listen, kids. Um, you, may, you may think you want to go camping in the rain, 
But I am telling you right now, you do not want to go camping in the rain. Oh, Daddy, we want to do it. We'll have a tent. We'll be in the tent. I'm like, yeah, but camping's not fun if you're just hanging out in a tent that's leaking on you all night long and you can't get the fire started. I mean, have you ever watched Survivor? They can't start the fire without tent, without, without being dry. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, so we're not going camping. So I tried to figure out something we could do. So, so I have a Jeep, which I, I really like. And so I said, oh, we're going to take the Jeep mudding. We're going to take the Jeep mudding. And so, I mean, there's trails all over. In case y'all didn't know, there's trails all over this, this play. I know most of y'all stay on the highway, but there are other roads besides the highway. And so, I mean, and some cool ones. And so uh, when it rains, I'm like, yes, that means there's going to be puddles places. That, and if, if you have a Jeep, you're like, you want to drive through those puddles. It's why you bought the Jeep, all right, to get off the road. And so, and so, you know, we go down some trails and we're going down and looking for mud. I know y'all try to avoid the mud. I'm looking for it. Now, if I'm driving my wife's car, I'm trying to avoid the mud. In my car, I'm trying to hit it, all right? So, so I, I'm looking for the mud. So we're going down this trail and, and finally, I, 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 we're going down a side trail of the trail. Now, that's when you know you're finding somewhere. Side trail, we're going, I'm going down the side trail of the trail and you know, it's, it's a pretty new Jeep, but you know, I'm driving through and you know, uh, limbs are hitting my Jeep and, but just something, part of it just feels like it's manly, like it's just the right thing to do. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, you know, you don't need to be clean all the time if you're a man. You need to get dirty every now and then. God made you from the dirt. You should go play in it every now and then. One day your body's going to return to the dirt. It shouldn't be like, oh, it's the last, I hadn't been here in a long time. <laughs> so I, I'm going down this trail, and we, 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 uh, we see this massive pit of water. And I'm like, oh, yeah, baby, this is it. This is it. And I got, already had four-wheel drive on. I'm like, I'm ready to hit this thing, man. And I'm like, we're going to. And so they've been all excited up to this point. I mean, we're listening to uh, Minister. We're listening to Minister. He's like our, he's, he's like our off-road music. You know, it's like, boom, 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 boom. You know, laugh at the devil like this. Ha, ha, laugh, laugh at the devil like this. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> we see that pit, and all of a sudden, fear grips my children. Don't do it, Daddy. Don't do it. Because the sun's starting to go down. We hadn't had dinner and it's raining. And I'd kind of told him, I said, look, if we get stuck out here, we're just going to be sleeping in the Jeep. We're just sleeping in the Jeep. All right. And I got some, you know, I, I got some animal crackers and I got a, half a bottle of water. We're just going to share it, ration it out. Watch a movie on my phone. It's all good. Don't do it, Daddy. No, don't do it. Before they were all on board. Let's go, let's go, woo, yeah, laugh at the devil like this, ah, ah, laugh, laugh at the devil like this, right? But now, since there's a big puddle of water and this is what I came here for, no, we're not going to make it, we're not going to make it. What message does that send to me? Are we definitely going to do it now? If I had any questions before... We're about to go through this. I don't care if we bottom out. I don't care what happens. We're about to, and I say, look, and, and I said, if we get stuck, we all got to get out and we got to push. I'm trying to make him a little nervous, you know. And Macy, and Macy had dress shoes on like this. She likes to wear, she, she's a girly girly. She's eight years old. She just likes to be girly girly. So she's got dress shoes on. She goes, well, uh, if I get out and push, I'm doing it barefoot because I'm not taking these shoes in the mud. <laughs> so my girl, I said, that's all right. I can live with that. The wholehearted trust that I had before was all of a sudden dwindled to nothing. So we go ahead and we go through it and we go through it like nothing. I mean, just in and out. And they scream the whole way, ah, in and out. And I say, look, look, what's up with y'all? Where are we all at? You didn't trust we could make it through the mud pit. And many times, that's, that's a parallel of our walk with God. 
which is, oh, Lord, I love you. I'm in this with you, God. Whew, I'll go where you tell me to go. I'll obey what you, you tell me to do. I'll, I'll, I'll say what you tell me to say. But you show up at work on Monday, and the Lord says, witness to your coworker, and you're like, oh, no. Oh, no. No, I ain't doing that. You show up the next Sunday, and pastor teaches on tithing, and you're like, oh, no. No, I trust you, Lord, but I'll obey it, but I ain't doing that. Right? And so, so what is God really after? Is he after more than just you being like this? You know what I'm saying? What is he really after? He's after your trust. He wants you to trust him with no strings attached. All props gone. Everything except him. Everything except him. Typically... We'll let everything that props us up, uh, we'll get rid of all of it except just like one, maybe. Like, I'm going to hold on to this one thing because this, if God fails, I at least still got this. <laughs> but the reality is this, God will not fail. And I've found this as well. Any area of my life that I'm allowing myself to trust in more than God is the one area that God's going to go whap. Just knock it right out from underneath me. And it's at that moment, and, and hopefully we don't have to have too many of these moments, but it's at that moment when you're laying on the ground, you're like, okay, do I really trust God like I sing like I do? You are mighty to save. I know it's singing rapping day, y'all. You are mighty to save forever, author of salvation. Woo! You rose and conquered the grave. My G. Woo! Cog shining out. Woo! Let the whole world sing. Woo! We sing about my Savior, the King of Kings. And you get in the car and you got like, you know, two miles left before you're, you're, you're broke on empty in the gas tank. You're like, <laughs> we ain't gonna make it kids we ain't gonna make it we, it ain't gonna happen I mean God's mighty but he don't have no gas he don't have no gas are you understanding what I'm saying today God can be very mighty in church but sometimes where the rubber meets the road, when you really need, when he's really looking for you to put your wholehearted trust in him, we have a hard time with that sometimes. What is this trust? What, it's, it's simple. It's faith in God. God rewards faith. God rewards those who trust him. God rewards those who obey him because they fully trust in what he's saying to do. They fully believe that he says, if you can make it through that mud pit, I just believe that if he told me to go, then I'm going to go. Praise God. I trust him. I trust him. Now, Proverbs 3, what does it say in verse 5? It says, trust, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. It says, lean not to your own understanding. All of your ways acknowledge him. He'll direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Trust in the Lord with everything that you've got. Lean not. What, what, lean, what, what's this? It's leaning, right? Instead of leaning... And this is what it feels like when you're leaning on God sometimes, like I'm leaning on, like, where you at, God? It's much easier to lean on something I can see. I can lean on this. Well, I know it's there. God, however, like, where you at, bro? But how many times do we live our life, we say we trust God, but like we're really leaning on this. Lord, I trust you when I get to heaven one day. I'm going to trust you. I'm, I'm trusting you for heaven, but I'm not going to trust you with anything else now. Like, I, I believe you, but don't tell me to do nothing that makes me uncomfortable. That makes me feel like I'm leaning on nothing but you. He says, trust in the Lord with all. Everybody say all. all. Everything you've got. Turn to Luke chapter 5 real quick. Now, this is going to be a revelation that you need to hold on to for the rest of your life. And here it is. Are you ready? It's deep. 
supernatural, it's going to blow your mind. I mean, Joel Osteen, T.D. Jakes, you know, they're all going to wish they heard what I said today. For real, I'm serious. And here it is. God is smarter than you. But when you don't listen to him, you are acting like you are smarter than him. Like when the Bible says to forgive. No, I'm not doing that. Why? I think I can take vengeance out better than God can. I can revenge better than God. Right? I mean, God's got going to be all forgiving and merciful. I want to get a bat out and just let him know, hey, don't mess with me. Right? Forgive. Love. Believe the best. Give. 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 Give away stuff to get more. That don't make any sense. Like, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get multiplied blessing by giving things away. Oh, okay. Don't make sense. Does, does it? No. It's God's way. God's way is different than man's way. Now, in Luke chapter 5, it says this. And uh, let's just look at verse 1 here. It says, So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. And this is Jesus they're talking about. And it says, And saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. And when, si and when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. So what is the first part of what he, he resp his response to Jesus? His first response is what he understands. I mean, let's look at the big picture here. Jesus was raised to be a carpenter. These guys are professional fishermen. So Jesus does not know as much about fishing as they do in their mind. We all, we all know Jesus like created the fish, all right? But as far as they know, Jesus is limited in his understanding. I mean, look, Jesus, if you told me how to build a table, I'd listen to you. If you told me how to put a wall up, I, you know, I'd listen to you. If you told me how to build a chair, I'd listen to you. Uh, but, like, go on the fishing stuff, like, you know, we've been fishing since we were little boys. This is what we do. In fact, not only is this what we do, we've been, we've been doing this all night. And we have caught nothing. These guys, we have, we have gone fishing when you're supposed to go fishing. We went to the spots that we always go to. We hit the hot spots. We know exactly when, where, how, and, to, and how to do this. Not only that, we've already done it. We've already put our nets up. We've already got everything taken care of. It's already cleaned up. Anybody ever cleaned up your stuff? You know, like, I'm, we're done. Whew. We got it all together. We're all finished. And then after all that, you're going to tell me. After all that I know, that you don't know, that I know, that I know, that I know you don't know. Look, you can teach, teach all the people about all the things of God, but I know how to fish. Okay? Nevertheless. And that's it there, y'all. Nevertheless. In spite of everything that I think I know. In spite of everything that I think I know better than Jesus about. And we can all sit here and look and act real holy, but there are areas of our life that sometimes we act like, okay, God, now I know you said to do this, but you don't understand. Really? He doesn't know your problems? He doesn't know your issues? He doesn't know what's going on in your life? And it's in those moments well, you've got to say, nevertheless, at your 
word. Because of what you said. Now what is this? I'm going to trust you on this one. I'm going to trust you, Jesus. I'm going to trust you. Can you imagine the thoughts going through his head as he's going back out? What in the world am I doing? Listening to this guy. I mean, the thoughts that would, would cross your mind, whether, he, whether you meditate them or not, the thoughts would be like, what? why is he telling me to do this? Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And when he had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. Right? The first step of obedience and trust may have been very difficult. But when the blessing hit, oh, anybody ever been there? Like, oh, I'm so glad I did that. <laughs> wow, man, God really does know more than me. Woo! I was beginning to wonder. Right? I love him. I trust him. I, I just did what he told me to do, but I didn't think it was really going to work out. You know, I wonder if he's really thinking, like, at your word, I'm going to do it. But, like, you know, at the end of this, I'm going to be like, see, Jesus. See? See? Listen to me when it comes to fishing. I know more than you when it comes to... And, and we can have that attitude sometimes. We're like, look, God, I'm going to obey you. But at the end of this thing, I'm going you know, to be like, God, see? 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 Told you they were going to act that way. Yeah. Told you it's how it was going to turn out. Yeah. But when the reward and blessing starts to roll in, what happens? It's like, whoo, man. I knew it. I knew God was faithful. I knew, man, I knew he was going to do what he said he would do. I knew, I knew if he told me to go out, praise God. I knew it was going to work out just how he said it was going to work out. I knew, and man, I, I wish I had listened a little bit better because he told me to let nets down and I just let down one. I should have put both of them down. Man. <laughs> it's breaking the net. They started signaling to their partners like, I'm not sure what the signal was, but like, <laughs> fish! We got lots of fish! I'm going to need your boat! We can work out a deal. Filled both boats, and they're both about to sink. <laughs> then when Peter, Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. <laughs> of course. You doubted Jesus. Ah. Oh. You know stuff I don't know. And all it takes is one time in your life for you to take a step of faith and trust God in spite of what you think you know. And that should change you forever. You go, man, from now on, let's just do it, man. Let's just do what God says to do in spite of what we see. In spite of what we see. Anybody ever heard of a man by the name of Doubting Thomas? His name's not actually Doubting Thomas. His name's actually Thomas. Isn't that a shame? But we call him Doubting Thomas. That's how people know him because he said, Jesus, un unless I can actually touch your hands, unless I can really get a hold of you, I'm not going to believe. I mean, show me the holes, for real. Show, I want to see it. Jesus obliged him. But then Jesus said something real interesting. He said, you believe because you see. He said, blessed are those who believe who do not see. Oh, what kind of trust does it take for us to trust in a God, to worship a God, to sing to a God, to give to a God in whom I have never seen? Not with my physical eyes. 
some of you may have seen Jesus. I, I've never seen Jesus. I've seen some, some pictures that I, I like, some I don't like so much. But <laughs> I've seen some different things that people portray Jesus as and seen the movies and somehow you got it in your mind that Jesus is some like British guy, you know, <laughs> blue eyes and, you know, or you got him that he's, you know, he worked for Mel Gibson. That's who Jesus is. Or, or Jesus is the guy from the Bible. You know what I'm saying? We all have this picture in our mind, but in reality, you've never actually seen him with your physical eyes. So what kind of trust does it take for you to believe in him in the first place? It's faith. It's faith. God rewards faith. The reward of faith for you believing in him and that he died on the cross for you, that he rose on the third day, and you're confessing faith in him. What's the reward of that for you? Salvation. Trusting in him is salvation comes to your house. Anybody ever heard the story of the centurion? Amen. Centurion, I mean, he, he's in the army, military man. He comes up to Jesus and he says, my servant, I mean, he's paralyzed. I mean, he's, he's about to die. I mean, it's bad. He's in a bad spot. Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. He said, no, 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 no. You just speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Now, it takes a lot to get Jesus' attention. That got Jesus' attention. And Jesus said, let's just make a demonstration of this right here. Uh, I have not found so great a faith, not even in the, the covenant people of Israel, is really what he's saying. Not even among covenant people who should know about faith. He said, you go ahead. Now, what's cool to me is this, that that centurion took a walk back to the house, believing in what Jesus said. No cell phones, y'all. No text. No Twitter. No Facebook. No Instagram of the servant going, With the little quote thing, I'm healed. None of that. He actually walked out what he said he would. He says his servant was healed in that self same hour. Because Jesus said it, I believed it, and I'm walking back to the house, knowing that it shall be even as he said it would be. Taking Jesus at his word taking Jesus at his word. Can you trust him? Yeah. You can. I'm a parent and I've made mistakes. Any parents out there made mistakes with your kids before? I have. One, one time after a service, we were in, in church here and you know we stick around and talk for a while. And um, my kids, this is like second home for them. And so they're enjoying themselves around the church. And so there's some kids that are jumping off the stage right there, jumping off the stage. And so, you know, I get over there. My kids are small at that time. I don't know how old, two, three, four, somewhere right in there, you know, small. And so, you know, so the kids are jumping off the stage, and I'm catching them, you know. I'm catching kids jumping off. It's not just my kids. It's other kids in the church. Too. I'm catching them. And then someone comes up to me and starts talking to me. Someone comes up to me and goes, Pastor, I need to ask you a question. I said, oh, sure, yeah. What's going on? And my little Macy Claire, sweet little pretty shoes, she's on the stage and she just knows daddy's going to catch her because he has been. She jumps off the stage. Whoa! <laughs> All I felt was her face on my shoe. Isn't that horrible? And I looked at this friend and I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh man, I'm, so, I'm smiling. I'm like, oh, Macy, it's going to be okay. You know, it's horrible. Why? I missed her. I missed her. Now, she, she believed she could trust me, and I want her to always believe she can trust me. But I really need her to trust in God more than me. I want to introduce her to the one who you can never mistrust. Right? More than my wife trusting me, I want her to trust God. More than me trusting my wife, I need to trust God more. Why? Man, 
Uh, we all make mistakes. We've, we've missed it from time to time. But if your trust is in God, there is an unshakable peace, strength, and joy that you can live in. Hallelujah. I said it earlier, but he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His track record of what he has done is a continual reminder and strengthening of our faith of what he will do and what he always will do. How good is God? How good is, do you trust him? Do you trust him? I said, do you trust him? Hallelujah. 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 I think for, for all of us, that kind of hits us on different levels. If you don't know Jesus, you've never surrendered your life to him, then that's a simple step you've got to take today. Say, I trust Jesus. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. But after you've put your trust in him, do you stop? Say, I don't know. I trust you, but that's enough. Or do we live how he's called us to live? Do we walk by faith and not by sight? Do we live by faith? Trusting in him because if there's, there's one thing that he's really, really after, he wants your faith to be in him. He wants your trust to be in him. He wants your whole heart to be committed to him. He wants everything that you have. You, he wants you to trust your, your past mistakes and failures to him. He wants your, you, you to trust him with your today, this very day that he's going to give you uh, bread to eat and water to drink and a supply for you. He wants you to trust him with your future. He wants to trust you. He wants you to trust him with, with your kids, the, with your grandkids kids, with your, your marriage, with your business, with your family, with everything that you have. There's not one area of your life that he doesn't want you to say, God, I fully surrender and commit and put my faith in you. Nothing takes the place of you in my life. For the rich young ruler who thought, he had everything. Jesus asked the one thing he didn't want to let go of, his stuff. I'm not sure what your stuff may be. I'm just telling you it's not worth it to hold on to it. Man, if you're here today and you say, you know what, and you may be on different levels of this, but if you're here today and you say, I need to put my trust in Jesus. I need to put my trust in him. I need to wholeheartedly, fully commit myself to him. Listen, you may be like Simon, who maybe you think you know, and maybe you do know as far as you know. But the reality is this. If he's telling you to let go of some things, if he's telling you to do some things, he'll tell you to do things that just don't always make sense. He'll tell you to, to go places that don't always make sense. He'll tell you to say things that don't always seem like, boy, that's not going to make sense to anybody. Why? Do you want me to do that? He'll tell you to let go of some things that you just seem like, man, I, it'd be better for me to hold on to that. I feel like I can take care of that better myself. But if you're fully trusting him, you've got to learn to let go of what you think you know, what you think you can lean on, rely in, trust in. And hold on to him with everything you've got.